Hi there, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. I'm Emily of Emily's Art Journey and I'm so glad that you're here. Today we are going to be continuing my Disney villain series and we are going to be drawing the evil stepmother from Cinderella. And then in the next video, I will be coloring her in with acrylic markers. So hopefully you'll tune in for that as well. So grab a drink and grab your pencils and paper. I am working on Bristol paper, which is what I've been working on for this whole series because it's really good for alcohol markers and it works perfectly as well for the acrylic markers. For my supplies, I have my circle template for the eyes and her earrings. And then I have my little brush that I use to sweep away the little eraser shavings so I don't smear my work. And then I just have a regular kind of eraser, my meat eraser, and then my mono eraser. And then I have my 2H pencil. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Move my drink. I'm drinking some chai tea this morning. All right, so her face is really, really long. So I'm going to draw an oval to start with loosely because then we're going to put her face in first. I like to, whenever I'm kind of trying to mimic something instead of just kind of creating it out of my head, I really like to put the face in first because that way then I can build the shape of the face afterwards. But I put the oval in first just so I can kind of know where I want the drawing to be. So I'm going to make it a little bit slanted, just a little bit. And I'm going to kind of put in a little bit lighter to start with before I kind of make, make it a little bit darker. And I'm using my entire arm from the shoulder, not you don't want to just do it like this because it just doesn't help get a very good oval or circle or whatever you're trying to go for. And then I'm going to erase kind of these inner lines so I kind of know where I'm working. And then her eyes are really high up. She has a very long face, as I said. And I'm gonna make them just the tiniest bit kind of slanted. So her head just looks like it's just a little bit tilted. And then put her nose about right here and then her lips about right here. And then I'll probably end up extending her chin just a little bit as well that down just a little bit more. You can kind of draw a circle to put in the spot. And then move down a bit and then you can draw kind of another oval sideways to kind of mark where her lips are going to be. And then a good way to map out the eyes is put a center line here too. Should have done that first, but that's okay. can kind of gauge how big the eyes are going to be and hers are more natural looking the last couple of ones that we've done they had really um, like bigger eyes or super skinny eyes so these are more of a natural eye if you will but you can draw a circle in the center making this this little where it crosses right here is the center and then you want to make kind of the same size on the right and the left, the same kind of placement. And then that way, you know, the spacing between, and then you kind of start building your eye from there. So we'll just kind of start putting the shape in her left eye, which is the one on the right is fairly slanted. So I'm just going to start with that line and then kind of round it off. And I'm going to stop right here at this line. 
And then her little inner tear, tear duct is actually pretty prominent. So I'm gonna put that in and then I'm gonna drop down and then go up and meet this line up here. can make adjustments. I think I'm going to make that just a little bit bigger. Her eyes look like they're very wide open. Like she is unhappy. <laughs> and one eye looks a little bit larger than the other. I don't know if that's by design or to make it look because her head's turned a little bit. I'm not really sure. But anyways, to this side. And this one's a little bit more rounded. This one's a, a little bit more like an almond shape. And then this one just is a little bit more rounded. Like this one's open larger for some reason. So you can make that a lot more rounded up here at the top. It's rounded. And then it kind of slopes into that, that tear duct. And this eye is the one that's just a tiny bit lower. So I could probably even drop that down a little bit more, actually. It's just the tiniest bit. It's not crazy noticeable, but I'm going to drop the little tear duct down just a little bit. And it's just that way because her head is slanted. It's pretty rounded right here and then it actually kind of goes pretty directly right back up to that that tear duct it's always interesting when you get into the shapes of eyes and things they look so weird you know when you when you're just looking at someone you don't really notice it but when you are actually really paying attention it's like we, eyes are very weird <laughs> And then her eyelid on this eye is kind of a slanted line. And then it goes, extends here just a little bit. And then it kind of slopes up and ends about three quarters. And then it kind of rounds off here and goes all the way around and then just ends right at the corner of her eye there. And this one's a little bit wonky. It starts almost right at the edge of that tear duct, just a little bit farther back. And then it kind of curves up. ends about three quarters of the way as well and then it also wraps around the, the eye there and then ends just right underneath here and then her eyebrows I'm just gonna kind of put a line in for those right now and then I can shore those up uh, later whenever I'm going to color them in if I want to, but for now I'm just going to put a line in just to get the shape and they're pretty severe. Angled up and then down. It's kind of like a check mark almost. And they go a little bit past. This one could even be a little bit um, this one can go a little bit past even. They go just a little bit past the actual the eye and they are 
you know, at a, a pretty, pretty fierce angle. They're very expressive. Something like that. And then she has some little lines in her face. You know, she's an older woman, so I guess they were kind of putting in a few little, little lines there. So you can kind of put those in. And then her nose starts a little bit to the left of that eye that we we made earlier, or a little bit left of the center line. And it looks like it's kind of supposed to be a little bit crooked. So it goes in a little bit, and then it goes out. And then it comes back in. About like that. And then this would be the bottom of her nose. go up into her left or right nostril I should say actually that's a little bit too far sometimes it's easier to start with the point here so you know how far to make the, the the bottom of the nose go. go and then this side actually goes up and shows a little bit of the nostril and then it's kind of angled more angular on this side like so and then her lips are very pouty, angry. <laughs> so there's a pretty good size indention and I'm just making that right along the center line there. And then bringing them up, it's kind of like a V. gonna bring it like a little hump there and then just straight down and then I'll do the same thing on the other side just kind of straight down and then they're kind of very small here and then you just mimic the line that you had already put in to create her top lip and then it's also skinny on this side and then it starts, her bottom lip starts up from the corner of the top lip. And it's a little bit wonky. One side's a little lower than the other, the, this left side here. And the angles. Like so. She is not happy. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put her um, pupils in. And I'm gonna use my circle template. And there's a bit, there's a fairly big gap between her, the top of her eyelid here and where her pupil is because it's supposed to look like her eyes are really wide open. So you would see more of the white part. So I don't wanna pick a super, super big circle. I think we'll start with this one. And you also don't see the entire circle, the entire cornea, I guess. I don't know. Cornea, pupil, I always say the wrong thing, I think. So I'm gonna drop the bottom of my circle template right here, a little bit under that eye line so it cuts off. Kind of like that. And she's kind of looking down as well. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side here. There and there's also a line here. And then she's got a couple of lines just kind of under her eyes. And now we can 
draw in the shape of her head. I like to start at the eyes and they actually go in a little bit, kind of start with that. And then if we want to go up first, it goes, it juts out a little bit and then goes just a little bit past her eyebrow, back it at a little bit of an angle. And then the same thing on the other side, it juts out a little bit and then kind of comes up a little bit past her eyebrows. And then the center of her hair is almost exactly in the center of her face. So you can kind of roughly put in another little, it's kind of slanted V a little bit, bring those lines together just to kind of save the place for that right now. And then we can drop down and do the rest of her head or her face shape. So then this is going to jet back out a little bit. Once you get past her eye it has like a little, little hump there, not too severe, but it definitely has a little bit jetting out there. And then you come down and you go in a little bit. And then once you get almost to the lip there, you're going to go back out a little bit. It's like her jowl or something and angle it down. And then it's going to go in again and her face is super long. And then her chin is very square. And you can just kind of loosely put this in. Like I, I'll make some adjustments and then we're in here and then we're going to go out a little bit and then head back in a little bit. Like her cheek is just sunken in a little. And then out a little bit. And then again, it's going to go in a little bit, a little bit of an angle and then come down to the chin again. So some of these lines I made are way too severe. So need to, it's, it's subtle. So it doesn't have to be so, oh my gosh, like it's just like right in your face. Sometimes it's easy to kind of overcompensate when you see something, you know, sticking in or sticking out, I'll put it in and it's just too harsh. And then her hair, she has one little part. It's about, half an inch or so from where her eye is here and it curves up and then down a little bit and then swoops back up and then there's another part right next right underneath that that goes up and then meets that other part it's like a streak of gray I guess but in this case it's gonna be pink and then we're gonna put her ear in and it's just basically a little squiggly line. It starts in, juts out a little bit and then heads back down and ends kind of like right where her nose is. And then we're gonna stop for a second cause her earring will go in there. So I will grab my circle template again. And her earrings are decently sized. So I think this is the size I'm gonna use. And this one is cut off just a little bit. So I'm not going to make that a full circle. No, this one is the one that goes all the way. This one over here is cut off a little bit. So then you can go in and just kind of erase that line there. And then we can go to the other side here and put in another, we'll mimic this one where it kind of goes up and then back down a little bit, a little dip there, go right under that a little bit and then kind of swoop up. And then we can put this ear in again. It just kind of goes in a little bit and then sticks out and then goes back in. And then there's just kind of a little line inside and then there's one over here too, that just kind of represents the inside of her ear. And then we will grab our circle template again, make sure I have the right size. And then this one's cut off a little bit. And then up here, she has another kind of gray streak, if you will. So it comes to a point right here, right where that line is. And then it kind of swoops around. And then you meet at that edge or that little spot right there again. And then you are going to kind of mimic that shape that you just did where it's going to jet out and then curve back in. And then there's 
kind of like a couple little spots that just show like the directionality of the hair. And then here you can kind of, I'm going to make it go up a little bit more at an angle. And then here there's just another little area that shows the, the direction of her hair. Like so. Yeah, she is not happy. And then around her neck here, she has like a ruffle. So first I like to just, it's a little bit under each of the earrings is where it starts. And I just put a, like a little bit of a curved line around it, just so I can kind of tell how far out I want the ruffle to go. It's just kind of giving me a little bit of a roadmap. And then you can come in and kind of loosely, I'm, I'm drawing this darker than I would, just kind of start loosely putting in a ruffle, something like that. Of course you can make adjustments if you want it to be more ruffly or more squiggly. I'm just looking for a basic ruffle shape. And then her neck, this side starts right here, right next to that ruffle and then goes kind of straight down and then kind of fans out. And then on the other side, does the same thing. Straight down and then kind of fans out. And then you can go in and kind of erase, erase your lines. Or as I've said before, you can kind of do this on a, a different piece of paper so that you can go back over this with a black liner or a Sharpie or any kind of black that would show up and then use a light box to put on the paper that you really want to use to color in. That way you don't see any of your pencil lines or if you had to do a lot of erasing, you can just transfer it to the piece of paper that you're going to use. That's what I did for this one. That way I don't have any eraser marks. And this is the drawing and the paper that I'm going to use when I color it in in the next video. And then you can always use, as I've shown before, if you want to lighten your lines a little bit, I'm not going to worry about that as much because I'm going to be using acrylic markers for to color her in. So it will cover those lines, but I'll want to lighten them a little bit so that it doesn't um, kind of dirty up the marker. So as I've done before, you just take your neat eraser, kind of roll it up a little bit, and then you can just roll it across your paper. And then it will lighten those lines just enough and kind of take that first layer of the graphite off and then you don't have to worry about it kind of smearing all right there is our evil stepmother so if you want to color her in with me then tune in for the the second video which will post at the same time as this video i think i post them about 15 minutes apart but they will both be out on the same day so i will see you in part two thanks a lot for drawing with me bye